Hello, and welcome to the Activation Nation podcast, your weekly source of actionable advice from industry experts in self-development, health, life vantage products, network marketing, and more to help you activate your wellness, your business, and your life. Today's episode focuses on company, one of the four pillars of belief. But first, the legal stuff. You may hear our guests talk about the income they've earned or how their health has been affected with LifeVantage. Please note that the average annual earnings of a typical active LifeVantage distributor in 2021 was $704. For the most up-to-date information, please click the link in our show notes. Any product statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Our products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And now, here's your host to dive into today's story to help you activate your life. Well, hello, Life Vantage. This is Colton Smith, one of your directors of field development here at Life Vantage. And my goodness, we are in for a treat this week. Now, I got to set this up in the right way. I didn't actually get to host this particular episode of the Activation Nation podcast, I actually had my very good friend and colleague, the one, the only, Steve Irvin, one of our other directors of field development here at LifeVantage, step in. He filled in for me for this particular episode, and he and he had an opportunity to sit down with two of some of the most genuine people that you can find at our company today, Blue and Raylene Elam, and my goodness, they had an incredible conversation their story is unlike any story that you have ever heard. If you are new and you've never heard of Blue and Raylene, if you haven't heard their story, make sure that you're you're paying attention because it is it is truly remarkable the things that this family has had to overcome, and uh, and uh, it's it's truly inspiring. Uh, very very I guess they I think they would even say kind of humble backgrounds. You know, Blue being a firefighter out there in in Arizona for years. Found this opportunity all the way back in 2009, driving around all over the United States in a in a car that could barely run, um, and worked his tail off to the point where now today here at LifeVantage, he and Raylene are executive master pro tens. So without further ado, let's have Steve Irvin, Blue and Raylene Elam, go ahead and take it away. So I guess. I don't want to steal any of your your thunder and your shine. Uh, you guys are great people that I've grown to admire, and uh, I've been beaten by you in volleyball, in the water. <laughs> we've had food together. We've traveled together. Uh, so let's save the expense. Who are you guys? Let, let our listeners know who we get the opportunity to talk a little bit about belief with today. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having us here. Thanks for giving us this opportunity to share a little bit about ourselves. Um, so we are Blue and Raylene Elam. Um, give you a little history on us. Blue uh, was born and raised in Arizona, grew up there his whole life. Um, I grew up in California, um, went off to college to play volleyball in Arizona, met Blue, and we have six kids, been married for 24 years. And um, just recently, in the last couple of years, moved up to St. George, Utah. So that's our new home, and we love it there and um, been enjoying the outdoors and all the things that it has to offer. That's awesome. Uh, It's when you say kids and six amazing kids, all individual in their own right, amazing stories. That could be its own podcast (laughs) and its own. (laughs) But uh, let's say before network marketing, before Life Vantage and all, all this industry, uh, what were the Elams? Uh, what brought you? What made you? What did you do before this? Well, being in Tucson, if you uh, have lived there or whatever, usually the people know the Elams because it's because of the fire department. We had um, at one point 14 members of our family on the job, and it's what we kind of did is what we were, were good at. We loved fixing problems and helping people and serving. And, uh, you know, when people are running out of situations, we're running in, right? That's kind of the way we grew up. And um, did a lot of other things on the ranch and construction and drywall and those things, but primarily it was focused on, on um, the fire department, which I think for me was um, a great job, but it did take a lot of time away from home. But it and but it provided some for the family and allowed us to, to, um, to 
support our to support the family for me doing what i love to do by helping other people at the same time so there's definitely a, a balance but 24 hour shifts are are long so you're away from of home so some of the things i loved about it was just being able to help and serve and some things that were tough was i got six kids at home and, and a wife and we're gone for 24 hour shifts and and a lot falls on on ray during those times because if something happens during those times I'm, I'm not there you know and she's there mm-hmm. full time and raising the kids and, and they were young when we were on the fire department they were we were starting our family and our oldest was seven when our youngest was born. So we had a bunch of young kids um, that she was running with and, and supporting and helping. And um, But yeah, that's what we did. It's kind of a family tradition. It was fun. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I think we all grew up as kids kind of wanted to be firemen and things like that. So uh, you kind of mentioned that it it turned out to be a little bit different than what was expected. So uh, are there any specific moments or, or things that kind of made you have some aha moments that this may not be the thing long term for us? I, yeah, I think primarily it was what I wanted to do. It really mm-hmm. was. I loved, I loved that kind of work, solving problems, you know, showing up and you're kind of the hero all day, you know, you kind of put in that position, but you got to also pl- be that part, not just play it. Mm-hmm. And, um, but there was a few times where situations took place, almost didn't come home on the freeway, well, got hit by a car one time, a building collapse took place. And I remember just coming home one day and asking my wife, are, are we okay if something happens? Cause I'm in a pretty, pretty tight spot. And within 30 days, there was about a few situations that made me think and question, but it was enough for us to ask some of the hard questions and, and realize that we needed to at least look to other places and set something up just in case. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, um, what I loved was that I knew that my husband was out helping other people. And I knew that if we ever needed the help, he would have the experience and the knowledge to be able to help us at home as well. Um, and, and I have the same um, probably downfalls as he did. I I didn't enjoy having him gone for 24 hours at a time. It was a lot, especially with a lot of young kids. Um, and, and we enjoyed having him around. We enjoyed having the time spent and not, and we never felt like a complete family when he was gone and doing other things and felt like he missed out on a lot of, of what life really is, right? Mm -hmm. The time with your family, the time at home, the time with your kids and, um, and just wanted him to be able to partake with what we were doing as well. Yeah. So it's it's cool to see that this dynamic that plays is something that you felt good at, that you always kind of wanted to do. It, it played into the strengths of wanting to help people. But then you have the other side of that coin where family and you're missing out on these things. So in the end, kind of what made network marketing be something that you look to uh, as something to kind of replace that? Yeah, I think what started the conversation with those few situations where we came home and I asked those questions about, or, or would we make it if I didn't come home? <laughs> would you be okay? Would the kids be okay? And really that was our only source of income. And so we, we realized that all the other things I did with construction and drywall and all the other things just brought in extra so we could survive, but none of them were, were tied to a concept of longevity, right? I mean, mm-hmm. maybe some retirement with the department if we get to a certain point, if something happened on the job, there was some protection, but really there was just some holes in what I thought was gonna be important for um for my family to just so i can be comfortable and that to provide that security and really we just started thinking and looking and and it was about three days later someone just happened to you know it was just that timing where we're kind of open someone said hey i got something you want to look at and it was this industry mm-hmm. and we started our the 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 process of learning the industry understanding it and becoming skilled and and you know, versed in it, but that's how it started was just us having a conversation. Um, probably the, there's, if there's one moment, it was me coming home one night, my wife was on the ground rolling quarters and nickels and dimes and putting them in those little tubes to, to pay for some food that week. And we had two more days before our check came. And, and I remember that was the moment that caused us to kind of question and, and start that process. But once we started questioning, it seemed to just slide right into our lives and kind of meant to be. And it was just one, something that seemed to have all the right solutions for what we were looking for, if we would put the time in and build it right, it, mm-hmm. it could be something hopefully in the future that would support our family if I yeah. wasn't there or couldn't work, so. Well, and I think also on top of that, we just loved the system. We loved the potential. We loved what opportunities it gave to the average person. You didn't have to have some certain degree in college to be able to have this source of income that could potentially free your life. You know, I when I grew up, I grew up, um, in a not very wealthy family. And in my mind, the the logic was that in order to 
be rich per se, how people look at that is either that you go to a lot of years of school or mm -hmm. you inherit it. Right. And there was no other opportunities in my mind that could provide that in your life without having one of those two things. So the thing that, that really turned us on was the fact that um, we had this opportunity in front of us that even we could do. And we were the average people. We were the people out there working hard, going to work every single day, day in, day out, doing side Couple jobs to jobs, make money. Yeah. And this was our opportunity to to have more and to be more. Hey, it's, it's really cool that you, you both have touched on this, this concept of opportunity. So it, it makes me question, it sounds like, have you had any experience of this or this kind of your first shot at network marketing? At, at that point, it was new. When that, when we first got approached and said, hey, mm -hmm. why don't you look at the industry? It was new. And I didn't jump in right away to the concept. I think I got introduced first as a medic through the through products. And this industry seems to attract decent products and, and things that are unique that need an explanation that aren't just something you throw on a shelf. So there were some things out there that caused me to you know, bring home some vitamins and things for the to the firehouse and compare labels and and things. I just got versed in the in the industry, but then I started attending and understanding what the industry could could afford to our family, could provide uh, some of the security, some of the you know the risks as well. And but I just started understanding that this was something that didn't have limits, didn't have um, a ceiling on it, right? I mean, my job at the firehouse was very structured. I knew the next step on the ladder, but I knew who had to leave before that step could be taken. And I knew the one after that, and I knew what they provided in the concepts and in the, in the income. Mm -hmm. And this seemed to blow all those out of the water. And, and, and so yeah. that's really one thing that got me excited. And then the, the ability to have a leveraged concept. Those are the, the main things I think that got me to, to realize that it was important. So, so it seems like the, you guys went through a bit of a evaluation process where You'd been approached about products and things, but uh, you took some time to think it through. So what would you say are some of those concepts or, or key things to look for when you made the decision to ultimately jump into the industry? Yeah. First of all, I think because I was a medic, it was always products. I When somebody showed me something or I went looking at an opportunity, uh, products seemed to pop up quick and I could get rid of them quick. If I didn't believe in it, understand, I understood enough about our bodies and how it worked and and my, my focus was very medical at the time. It was, it was medicine and side effects. And I mean, you all see in the commercials, right? You see, <laughs> yeah. you know, it sounds like, sounds good. And then, and then they show a guy in the beach walking with his family holding hands. And then you hear a little voice come in that says seizure coma death has occurred in some cases. Right. <laughs> and, and I used to hear those and just kind of cringe because I was in that system and mm -hmm. I watched amazing things take place, but I also knew some of the things we were doing, were providing, maybe there was hopefully a better so solution and things out there. So products I always looked at. And then I started down this list of things like, how can the average person do it? Can I do it? Can my friends do it? Is it something that we have to be a CPA or a doctor to do or not? And it just seemed like there was this list that kept popping up with timing and trends. Were we along the right lines trend-wise? Were we, were we focused on the right uh, were we giving people a chance to to own their own gig, right? It's kind of becoming a gig economy where people are looking for for things like that. And so we started evaluating timing and trends. Um, companies were important. I started looking around at different companies and, and realizing that there was a lot of different variables when it come when it came to companies and what they believed in and where they were heading and um, how big they were timing wise. Are they already expanded? Are they already in all these countries? Are they new? Um, what system did they have in place? I mean, I literally had a checklist. And something kind of interesting that, that a lot of people don't know is we actually at one point realized it's something we wanted to do. And we went looking mm -hmm. for a company that fit our family situation and our checklist, our evaluation. It was pretty, pretty tough, but we felt like it was something was out there. And what did I, I think I came home after 15 different times of either seeing something or talking to someone and being at the corporate office somewhere or somebody's the CEO sitting down with. And I, I just remember realizing I, I came home thinking what we're looking for, maybe not, maybe it's not out there, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe we're being too picky, but I couldn't find anything that checked all the boxes. Some had great products, some had good timing, some had comp plans that were okay. But when you start to put it all together, it was hard to find something that was really good timing that had all of those things in place. And ironically, I think after being pretty stringent on it, we kind of almost gave up on the idea. So I'll just go fight fires and hang drywall and, you know, and, and do that and, maybe not see my kids as much, but at least we're, we have something coming in. And then I got a phone call. We went to look at this and I remember calling excited. I think we found it. I said, everything we're looking for, it checks the boxes. We're excited. This is our chance. But 
it's going to take some time away from the family to get us started. And we kind of huddled up and had some discussions. And my wife was kind of instrumental at helping the family understand the difference of staying on the fire department long term versus, you know, making this transition and, and setting a system up, a leverage system, and uh, maybe the time it would take to do that. But that short term imbalance for the long term potential balance at the time mm-hmm. was something we hoped for and I think we found in the process. So. And I think that was kind of a great experience on my end, too, just because um, we had discussed what we were looking for. We had, you know, we'd been through a learning process. We've been learning how the industry works. We, you know, we, I talk to people now that, oh, yeah, I've heard about network marketing since I was a kid. Well, we didn't have that experience. We didn't learn about it until later years. But just to just to go through the experiences that um, he was talking about with different things that we were learning from each thing that we went through, whether it was product, whether it was company timing. Um, And just to get that call and feel like excitement, feel the excitement from the fact that we found it. We found something that encompassed everything that we were hoping for and looking for and could provide for our family Um, and being able to hear that it was possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I remember one thing too that just came to mind when you said that is the way we made the decision was we huddled our family up, kind of how we made decisions. We brought everyone together and my kids were young, one-year-old to eight-year-olds, you know, young and, you know, rambunctious, fun little kids. And But I remember saying to him, I said, dad found something, but we're going to have to take some time away from the family. We're probably going to have to focus on this to make it, you know, we're adding another plate. We're already spinning a bunch mm-hmm. with all the ball games and stuff and people, your kids getting started and that those things. And I just remember asking him, I said, are we okay with, with adding this? And kind of a fun story about my daughter, who's probably, he was the oldest and smart enough to say, well, dad, she said, are you asking, are you, are you asking if you, if you can, or are you telling us you're going to, right? She's smart enough to kind of <laughs> realize that I was, I was after something. I said, well, you know, I know I only see you guys a few hours a week right now because of all the jobs and side jobs. I said, I understand if you guys don't want me to, and maybe we'll just keep doing this. And she said, well, if you're asking, I'd rather not. She said, I'd rather see you for the few hours we get. And I remember my wife jumped in and she just was real calm and said, I don't know if you guys understand what dad's saying. We can have him a few hours. I mean, it's a long career on the fire department. A few hours a week here and there, little vacations, but all that extra time. Or we give dad the time now. Let's go to work. Let's put the time in. With If if we truly found all the check boxes, let's give it a chance to put the time in. And maybe right, we can have dad all the time we want in the future. And it was powerful. And and I laughed because, you know, she asked, how long is that going to take? And my wife kind of giggled and she didn't answer that question. She turned to me and said, well, hey, well, how long is that going to take to <laughs> turn to me? And I remember just saying, well, it's, it depends on how we commit to this, right? And it's become part of my training since then is it depends on how serious you are, what kind of priority it is, how you commit. Is it is it something that is your focus and you're going to do? And what kind of support? I said, if you guys can support mom, I'm going to be gone. You need to help mom. We set little benchmarks at each rank kind of to, to be uh, a little party or a little, little reward and, and to kind of help us to actually be be part of all these different things. And the kids loved it. They got part of it. My daughter even learned how to look up on the computer to see what rank we were. And I came home one day and got a ham sandwich for lunch. And she's like, dad, what are you doing home? And I said, what do you mean? She's like, I, she said, well, we're not pro 10s yet. So I, get back out there, you know, <laughs> you know, kind of go hit our yeah. goals. And um, it was just fun to have the family support, but it was, what if we could do it and break loose and not have the time restraints of a normal job? And we got a lot of support from the family. It was probably one of the best ways, if you're looking at this, to tee it up and to start it with those commitments, getting everyone on board, and then making those small small um, goals and, and planning those out in the way. So, yeah. So if I understand that what made it as, as powerful of a decision is it it was one you you've done your own research. You actually came to the table looking for if we're going to do this, we're going to go all in. We're going to do it as a family, but it's got to check these boxes. So if I understood, some of those boxes were. What's the opportunity look like? Uh, the product, the, the compensation plan, and and ultimately, what are we plugging into system wise? So when you say that, we're now sitting here. We've been able to spend years together. What made Life Vantage kind of check all of those boxes for you? Uh, aside from your oldest telling you, kind of, hey, g- get out of here and go do it. <clears throat> well, at first it was we we it checked the boxes, but we started to go put in the work, mm-hmm. right? And there was many things that we didn't know yet. Products, for example, we had one study on one product and, and it checked one box, but but we knew there would have to be more expansion and more uh, you know, involvement in different different systems in the body and different, you know, to touch different people, we needed to definitely uh, find ways to explain that. Now the the nerve two concept that we found 
applied to so many people. And me as a medic, it provided not just how you look. I, I wanted to know how you felt. I wanted mm -hmm. to, to get in and actually affect some things and watch change. And, and so when I started looking at, you know, now looking back, now I can be excited about the development of the products we have, the different categories that were developed over time. Um, looking at each one of those individually has just been fun to, to watch them expand. For, for example, um, our compensation plan, right? When mm -hmm. I first started, we were hoping it would pay out and hoping it would do certain things. And over time, we now have an income statement form, a legal document that we put out each year that shows all the averages of rank and the amount of months it took to get there. And so people can go not just you know, listen to somebody and, and hope they're the the exception or the rule or, you know, they can actually go look at a, a legal document now and decide, hey, am I in these averages and this is what I need to make and here's how long it took and am I willing to go, mm -hmm. go do some of those things? So um, we have been together a long time and I think looking back, I'm excited for um, not, you know, the time from then till now has been very instrumental and at least in our family because of some mm -hmm. things that took place. But I'm excited for those people that are looking right now and, yeah. and going forward in the future and they get a chance to to see what's coming and and, and kind of have that same road road that we just kind of, it's not paved yet. It's not uh, smooth. You know, it's, we're still a new company, but we have a path. We've knocked over the big trees. We have a path and <laughs> yeah, people can yeah. walk down it, but it's definitely, uh, we're still looking for leaders to help us to do that. So. Mm. Well, and I would say along with that, you know, what, what role did these things play in our lives? For one, it's what brought us to the opportunity. So without those things, without the product and the compensation plan and all of those things, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's important to understand that those things are here. Um, and that's, that's what was exciting for us. That's what got us lit up and ready to start running, ready to be all in was the fact that, like I said before, the average person can make a difference, can be something different. And you have the opportunity to do that. You have the opportunity to be able to, um, for one, better your health through the products, but also help others to understand the products so that they can better their health. Mm -hmm. And then with the compensation plan, be able to better your finances and again, help others better their finances, right? What a better way than to be able to take a gift that you've been given and give it to someone else, um, which is truly what we feel that this company has allowed us to do. It has allowed us to receive a gift and to give a gift over and over and over again again to change so many more lives out there than what we came into contact with on a normal daily basis somebody that we can go and share something with and their life can forever be changed just like our life was forever changed yeah i, I like how you both are it's average it's the average story it's kind of the grassroots type of story and you both mentioned this uh it took some work. Uh, so what would you say, or, or wouldn't you give kind of that opportunity presentation? How do you make sure to kind of drive that home? What is something that you always really make sure that you hit home? Well, when I do an opportunity meeting, be because each part seems to affect people differently, it feels to me like sometimes I mention product mm -hmm. and someone lights up and someone else I'll mention comp plan and you can tell that's their, their pain right now. They need that. Someone else will hear timing and, and get excited and someone else will see a system and say, man, I've always wanted this. I just wanted help. I needed support. So each piece that we teach, I think, affects someone else in the room. So my simple answer is I, I try not to do a meeting without mentioning all six of those. Yeah. Company, timing, trends, product, compensation, and system, right? We need to at least touch on them so people know that we have all of the things that are that, that people need to check off. Right. And then I'll watch the crowd and say, man, th this group's really focused on this, or I can see the, the health needs. Let's talk about some of these things. And even, even within those categories, there's subcategories. When we say the word products, I, that could be a two hour conversation, right? Depending on which categories and which products we have, because we we have so many studies done now, we can get into the details of those. We could get into the, the concepts or the categories, but we have a way I think to affect so many people in so many different ways that I always try to touch on all of them and then find the, the pain in the room, show them that we have solutions and then just show them we're here to support them. I, don't, I think a lot of people have tried in the past different things and they may have had parts and pieces, but I don't think they've ever had all of this put together right. like we do here so that the uh, average person can have success. It levels the playing field. I don't care mm -hmm. if you're super smart and super successful or super educated, you come here and we're equal and we can, we can help everyone get to the same place. When I think to add to that, um, one thing that we try to make sure that people understand is you know, you hate that the phrase that a lot of people used to say in, in multi-level marketing was it's a get rich quick scheme, right? <laughs> yeah. There's nothing quick 
and that and it's not something that is just going to be handed to you um and i think that that's another thing we try to make sure that people understand is yes it's going to be work you're going to have to put in time but if you're consistent and you're consistently following the system and doing the things that are being taught from those who have paved that path, mm -hmm. from those who have tried. And we've all gone through lumps and bumps along the way and all had to learn the hard way. Sometimes it throws you backwards for a little while and you have to build your way back up. But the one thing that we've always tried to emphasize is that it is work, Yeah, you know? But for us, the way we looked at it is my husband can either leave our home for 24 hours every other day and go and put in work because the fire department was work too. And when he came home and had his side jobs, it was work. He had to do construction. And we can either continue doing that for the next 30 years, 40 years, and still live in, within the little bit of means that it provided for us. Or he can go and put the same effort of work and consistency. You know, when, when you go to the fire department, you can't show up once a year and mm -hmm. hope that you're going to maintain all of the things that you've learned, right? Yeah. You have to be consistent. You have to be going, even in the fire department, you go to continued education. You have to go and learn and continue to grow just like you do here. So I think the most important thing is to understand, yes, it's work and, and, the phrases you hear them your whole life, right? Anything worth having is work, mm -hmm. is going to take something from you. Otherwise you don't feel the gratitude in what you have. Yeah. So making sure we're reading between the lines here, because I'm not sure if we're listening correctly. It's work. Yes. So, so it's the work. So <laughs> yes. one might assume that you guys put in a, a bit of work there. And if your daughter's telling you to get back out of the house, uh, you're not supposed to be home yet. One might say this wasn't a get rich quick scheme. This wasn't success overnight. So tell us a little bit about that kind of what was some of the obstacles you guys had to overcome? You know, you were going from the fire department, going from that little bit of time and then the family collectively made a decision that it's okay. Let's, let's, let's jump head over hills into this. So what was that journey like early on? I think some of the obstacles is just getting the mindset shifted from to shift from I'm an employee, I show up to work, I clock in, clock out, versus I own something, right? I mm -hmm. own, it's my decision when I get up, it's my decision if I make phone calls or not. And you having to make those personal decisions allows you to, to actually grow pretty quick if you'd like and slow if you don't, right? I mean, and luckily we had a lot of experiences in some of those past situations in those companies and situations at work where I was putting leadership roles, I uh, did construction as a young age and ran crews of people and had to win their trust because I was a young kid running a crew of 12 guys on a job site. And, you know, my dad kind of giggled when he gave me the assignment, but I realized I'd picked up all these little skills. And mm -hmm. so it did speed the process that we were able to bring that. And everyone brings that to the table. Everyone brings something from their education, something from their past careers and mm -hmm. jobs. We bring it in and we help them to to, to kind of form that, right? And it may, it may still have, we'll have obstacles because this industry has a way of finding the the things you're you're not really good at and pointing them out. Right? <laughs> yeah. And you're weak here, you're weak here. But let's let's lead on a, a mentor. Let's mm -hmm. let's lock arms with someone else who has the strength there. And that because it is a different kind of system, I think everyone uh, can get over those obstacles. They can get where they need to go, and um, and it provides a platform. And I I said it once, but I just think that equal platform is kind of the concept. Come in, bring your skills, adapt it to our culture. And let's and add it to our culture. I mean, mm -hmm. bring the positive stuff and add. If it's negative, we'll get rid of it. <laughs> but bring the positive stuff, add it to the culture, and let's let's make life manage a bigger family by doing that. So we can help everyone overcome obstacles yeah. by having the strengths of of the team overcome the weakness of the individual. So, yeah, I would agree with that. I think, you know, it's just it's super important to um, to take the time to learn. Right. Whether you're just starting, this is your very first endeavor. It might take you a little while longer because you're incorporating and learning all of those skills. It doesn't mean it's not possible. And it doesn't mean that um, you're never going to make it or it's going to take forever. It just means that you have to take the time. Now, again, along with that, it depends on how much time you want to put into it, too, mm -hmm. because you can learn those skills faster and faster the more time you want to put into learning those skills. You know, some of them come with trial and error. Some of them come with 
listening to a podcast that might teach you something. You know, some of them come with different educations, going to an elite academy and learning something, you know, listening at an LVA, you know, all of the different systems that have been put in place to help you to gain that education mm -hmm. per se. Right. And so um, fortunately for us, we had dabbled in it enough in the beginning, just trying to understand and learn the industry um, and be able to take the things that we did have as strengths and be able to add to them or be able to strengthen them or learn them. Yeah. Right. And so when we, we came into Life Vantage, it still wasn't easy. It was mm -hmm. a lot of our time. Um, it was a lot of effort. But yes, we were able to find success because we went to school, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and people have to be humble enough to be willing to learn. You know, there's some people are very teachable and I think they're the ones that have quick success, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think one of my favorite quotes is that most people negotiate the price of success so long that they would have been there by now if they would have just paid it. Paying that price, listening to a mentor, changing the things we need to change has helped us, I think, get to some of our goals a lot quicker than, than some. So it's been fun. Yeah. Go to school, and, and I, I like that you tee up that we all bring our own strengths in, and for sure our weaknesses are, are going to be highlighted. Uh, so, in, in kind of the last little bit of time we have, let's go over, let's go to school a little bit. So, going through your checklist, uh, you make sure that you hit all of those those pillars. Uh, let's let's start with products. What is something that you make sure that you make that you hit on when you're discussing products, uh, whether with a, a prospect or or in a room that you're training? Yeah, let me, um, I think products are, and I've touched a little bit on it, but I think there's key things with our products that are unique. You can go read about them in medical journals, right? You can mm -hmm. go, there, there's a little different pathway to some of the credibility of our products that lends a little different situation than than some people like, or some companies that just have, have stuff or have an idea. We've had, we've been vetted out, we've been proven and tested. And as a medic, I was dealing with a lot of medical people that thought that way. And it helped to be able to hand them things that were, um, credible to them mm -hmm. and you know and then i think the other piece of this though is is sometimes we went down that road far enough where people thought man i gotta be a doctor to do this because it had we had <laughs> enough information for yeah. them to grab a hold of it and then i think that the back end was to then realize we had so much and then bring it down to a point where at a meeting we could say you know what we have all this products but let's let's give it to you in a nutshell and, and i call it kind of fireproofing it because my buddies and i we try to simplify things we had acronyms and and even though there was enough science for, for some, we still made it to realize that, hey, you turn a switch on, you tell your body to do what it's supposed to do. It's way different than us trying to take enough supplements to, to add to that and change that. And, and so for me, having a line of products that are an activating type product, right? Flip mm -hmm. switches on, makes us feel like we should, gets our body doing its own thing and in, in healing itself. Uh, that simple concept can be elaborated on in any category, but it's helped us to, to help the brand new person again come in Equal playing field, easy explanation with with stuff that when, when the big doctors want to go read about it, I've had three of them come back within the first few weeks and say, this product is way better than you said it was. Because mm -hmm. we try, we don't have to hype it up and it, it falls short. We actually do the best we can to teach it. And those that understand it find out that it's way better than what we can even try to right, explain. Right. So we've had a good time with the quality of our products. Okay. So with the quality of the products, we're compensated on the sale of those products. So. What was the thing that stood out to you guys about Life Manager's comp plan? Uh, what really just kind of this is it? This is the this is why we're going to jump all in. Um, first of all, potential, mm. right? It was the potential that um, we could work now. We could put the effort in now and we could have something that could continue over the years, right? That we could have a potential of having family time together. Um, I think on top of that for us, especially at that moment where we were with finances, being able to get paid every week yeah. on the work that you did and not having to wait and not having to um, get by per se until that check came in. So that I would say that was a huge piece for us, especially where we were financially at that time. Right. And then now, I guess what you would say excites us is the, the back end of the compensation plan. Right. Use that to go help others to continue to make more so that when a new country opens and when um, new things come out, and new people join, um, they can feel that same excitement for what's happening for the future of the company and what's happening for their future and what what longevity that's going to create for them. Yeah. Yeah. If you joined right now and you got to the, the rank of a pro seven, you get to participate in everything we've already done. Every country that's been opened, yeah. 
everything that's being sold already. And so I, it helps people to never feel like they've missed anything. Um, the work that's been done gets shared very fairly. Those that work get paid well. And it's a very fair, fair system and comp plan, which we've had a chance to experience um, recently. And I think it's really helped us, but to have a steady, steady thing in, the, in the, what's going on in today's world, mm -hmm. what people experienced the last couple of years, what our families experienced, it's nice to have a, a source of income that comes in on a leverage base. Yeah. I, I, I want to take a moment here because uh, not everybody knows the experience piece that you guys were able to have uh, a, a big story that I, I want to give you guys a chance to just pause and say, okay, when you talk about the experience, you talk about the work that you've done, uh, what was that experience that you guys had to walk through um, as a family? Well, I think to tee it up, um, you know, we were looking at all these things that we talked about in opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Timing and products and, and each have a reason and a checkbox to check off. But when you put them all together, it provides what we, an opportunity. And mm -hmm. what I look at is digging that well, an opportunity well, meaning that you dig, you dig, you dig, and you have things flowing into it. And in this case, it's volume, it's finances, it's success, it's leaders. It's all this stuff that provides for our family. Oh. Um, yeah, when you look at the, the all these factors that allow each part of the system to, to now be real, right? It was a thought before or hope and they became real, each one of those. Um, now in our life, we, we teed that up, we dug the well, and we had a pretty serious situation. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, we both woke up in the hospital with both of our daughters paralyzed and from an accident that we were all in, the four of us. Uh, my wife later lost her leg and uh, either amputated. And um, man, there's just so many things that changed in a short amount of time in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I, I look back on what if, right? What if we didn't choose this? What if we didn't dig hard? What if we didn't put the time in? What if we didn't pick this and what if I'll sell at the department and how would have things been if I couldn't go to work for six months, a year, year and a half, two years, maybe, right? What, what if, um, all these things started, started kind of being real and to realize that we had checked some boxes off and finances came in the next month, whether we were in the hospital or not, because it was based on volume and sales that were taking place based on our team and systems and things that we put in place. And so we went through a very tough, tragic, thing together mm -hmm. and I think life Anage became a huge health component during that time to help us it became a huge financial piece and more than anything a security on both ends of that that allow us to really focus on time and spending time and dealing with the problem not having a, the worries that typical that typically would be there when a situation like that mm -hmm. took place so I don't know how many people out there have ever experienced um, like a physical ailment that has left them in confusion, right? What about my future? What's gonna happen? What's going on? And I don't know how many people out there have ever experienced that financially, right? Where you're stuck in a spot where you owe a bill or you need to pay for something that's important, that you need, that is crucial, and you haven't been able to pay it. So I don't know how many people have been able to put both of those together and have them in the same place, right? So you're sitting, I mean, you can imagine this, right? You're sitting in a hospital bed. Um, you know, we were all in different conditions. We broke multiple, multiple bones. Um, I just remember kind of being in this haze, people in and out of our room all the time. Um, it was it was a little bit confusing at what our future looked like, right? It wasn't a, you know, for me as an athlete, yeah, you sprain an ankle, you you limp on it for a few weeks, and then you're good to go, and you're back to running, right? And this wasn't that. Mm -hmm. This wasn't, this was the unknown. Are we looking at two years of healing, five years of healing, 10 years of healing, right? So you have all of this confusion and where you're at in life, and then on top of that, and what kind of time frame you have, like Blue was just saying, could I take work off for six months? Could I take work off for a year, right? So all of those things. And then on top of that, to be laying there and them come in and say, you owe X amount of money to stay in our hospital, to receive treatment, to be able to recover to the best way that you need to be, right? right? So if you can imagine how stressful that would be for people. And I think the amazing part of it is digging that well, taking the time, everyone's gonna go through something in their life. It may not be a car accident. Um, it may be a lost job. It may be anything out there, but you're going to go through something. And the bottom line is if you don't take the time now to dig that well, then you're not prepared. For us, I remember the day I was laying in bed, um, Blue was 
actually finally able to go home after eight days in the hospital. Um, he needed to get home. We had four other children waiting at home for us without any parents because we're both laying in hospital beds. Mm -hmm. um, and he was able to get up and walk and get home. Um, and I remember I was laying in my hospital bed and my, my PT guy had just come in getting ready to get me out of bed to try to get some movement going on for the day. And the, and the lady from the finance department came walking in and she, you know, she was so nervous to come talk to me, you know, and she came and said, I, I need money from you guys. Right. And I remember sitting there and I said, Oh, that's fine. I think my husband's going to be in later with a check. And, and she was relieved in talking to me for one. I was relaxed because I was okay. Everything mm -hmm. was fine. We were going to be fine. You know, and as she walked out, I remember my PT guy was, he was infuriated. How do they come in and talk to you about finances when you're trying to heal? You've got to get better and all of these things. And I remember looking at him and I said, it's fine. We'll be okay. I have time to heal. I have the finances to heal. You know, we're going to be okay. And it was just one less thing. Now, you know, fast forwarding five years later, the road's been rough. The healing time has been hard, mm -hmm. but it has always been one less thing that we've had to stress about having all of our ducks in a row that we needed to at that time so that we could provide, we could provide for our children. We could help them to get through the trial that they're going through and will go through for the rest of their life. And so it was just a huge um, blessing in our lives to be able to say, yes, fortunately we had looked for our future and had taken the time to do that. Yeah. Man, it's, it's, kind of being one that's been able to kind of walk along and see kind of the story and the progression and then still see, still see all six kids, still see you guys engaged, still be able to go like Powell and things and, and watch you guys still go through this. So I'd say as we're wrapping up, you, you've walked us through all the pillars. The system was one major piece that you were able to, Hey, however long it takes, we've plugged into the system. We're able to kind of let the system be the system while we take our time. What's that last thing you, you guys clearly have massive belief in the company, but what's those last golden nuggets that you want to give everybody to wrap this up? I'll go first. So my golden nugget would be whether you just joined, whether you've been in for five to 10 years, or whether you're a leader that's still trying to decide if this is the path you want to go on. It's the same message from me. Go all in. Stop playing around with it. Stop treating it as a hobby. Stop tinkering with it, hoping that maybe it'll make itself appear to you. Mm. You need to take the steps that you need to take to make this effective in your life. So go all in, give it everything you have, put everything into learning. What's the worst outcome? You're more educated than you were when you started. Right. So there's always a benefit and a blessing in mm -hmm. anything that you can do to further your further your um, journey in this company. Yeah. And so that would be my nugget. When you said nugget, I thought of the, a gold nugget. Right. And, yeah. and uh, we grew up by a mine and, and just something came to mind when you I watched so many people dig and dig and dig and dig. And all of a sudden, you know, it may, it, they're learning the process. They're on the job. They're training. They're learning the system. They're mm -hmm. learning. They're doing. They're teaching. They're learning the process. They're being taught. They have mentors. And I've watched so many people turn around. And I can usually see right about where that nugget is, right? Because we've, we've watched so many leaders go through a process. Yeah. And I feel so bad when I watch them turn around right before they're there, right? Right before they actually finish. It would almost be like getting a, a if you needed eight years to, to qualify to be a surgeon and you, you do seven years in school, but you don't finish the eighth one because you didn't know there was only one where you left, right? Um, you can see some of that visually, but, but in this industry, you don't always see specifically the amount of time it's going to take. Mm -hmm. Through leadership, we hopefully can get you from A to B quicker. There's no reason we want to hold back secrets. We want to give everything we can. It's an industry that provides a lot of mentoring and training because everyone gets lifted up together. There's no uh, a certain amount of seats at the top. You know, I was on the fire department. There was one chief, right? If you wanted that position, you got to wait till he's, he leaves. Here, there's not just one anything. I mean, there's there's room for everybody. And I would just plead with people to, you know, it's that next swing of that that pick that might break through to that gold nugget you've been looking for. Mm -hmm. You just you just never know. So we have all the pieces. We are equal playing field. But it's a you. You have to make that decision at the end to apply our products, apply our comp plan, apply the mentorship, 
and jump in with us and run and all in is the best way. We constantly share videos and thoughts of, of uh, one in, one foot in, one foot out doesn't work. And I learned yeah. that on the fire department, right? If you're all in, the people are running out, you know, you can't be halfway in that situation. You got to run in and get your job done. And I'm glad I was able to bring that here, get the work done quick, get it done right. And now hopefully be a mentor and support for people around the country. We've got, we've got to travel to Thailand and, and Japan. And, and when you start to capture timing in some of these pieces and, and everyone still has that chance and to, to go do that together with our family, each other, watch other people go on, watch their lives change. My, my end goal um, in people doing that is to, is to provide a system and set up just in case. And since our situation, I've heard family after family, maybe not as tragic or big or maybe bigger, but when they say, you know what, that little bit of security, that, that work I, I did beforehand paid off and I went through this, my husband got this, I had cancer and I had to be home for six months and bills were paid because of a system and leveraged income that we created. And that's what I wanna go help hundreds of families still do. And I don't care what country you're in, we're gonna keep growing and do that, but let's, let's work hard and build that system because you just never know. And, and let's have more and more families feel that security just in case. And so yeah. that's, that's kind of became our, our new vision and, and motto and, and goal. And uh, uh, we're gonna keep working until we've, as many families as we can has that opportunity, so. That's awesome. Well, with that, everybody let's all go in and let's all go hard let's go put in the work now take that next swing and go all in awesome thank you thank you for tuning in to the activation nation podcast be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode tell your friends and share your biggest takeaways from today's discussion with anyone who could benefit from them this episode is sponsored by Life Vantage Legacy, a nonprofit dedicated to improving lives and building a lasting impact for those in need around the world. Learn more at lifevantage.com. We look forward to sharing more with you during next week's conversation. Thanks for listening and being an important part of the Life Vantage community. <laughs>